What's poppin' guys, it's the Sound Alchemist part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm back to talk about Warhammer 40k once again. So this video is all about the new box set that is going to be up for pre-order very, very soon. And I'm talking about none other than the Kill Team Pariah Nexus. I have been eagerly awaiting the Space Marine contents of this box for a long, long time, because that is going to be the main troop choice that I'm going to be using for my Primaris supplement. And that troop choice are Heavy Intercessors. They're going to be really, really good because they're essentially like Terminators with some pretty long-ranged firepower. Uh, I believe they've got three wounds and their weapons are about 36 inch range, so that's really good. Um, they're going to be pretty survivable, really tanky. And the reason why is because they're donning Gravis armor. Gravis armor is really good, especially since you've got like the Gravis Captain, you've got the Gravis Eradicators, and now you've got your troop choice that's Gravis. So it is potentially possible to have a whole Primaris army of nothing but Gravis Marines. So I'm really looking forward to that, and the pre order goes live on the 27th of this month, so just a few weeks away. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks about this box is that it's not just those guys that come in there, it's a kill team box set, so it's pitting Space Marines against the Necrons once again, however it is, it's just a weird box. So Gershwin and I and a couple buddies, we were talking about it, and they were saying that this box makes no sense because it comes with a captain with a uh, heavy bolter, I believe, or like a, 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 a long-range weapon. And obviously you've got the five intercessors, heavy intercessors, with their heavy weapons. And then on the other side, you've got flayed ones and a chronomancer. Now, I don't know about you, but the Space Marine side is all about firepower, shooting, while the Necron side is 90% close combat. So, the Necrons have to trek across the board to get into close combat against these Space Marines, where these Space Marines have more wounds, and they're going to be shooting at them the whole time, because Flayed Ones don't have any way of shooting back. So, how does this make sense? <laughs> it doesn't. So why is this being released as a Kill Team box set? At least make it more equal in terms of strength? Because obviously the freaking marines are going to kill them before they even get into combat. And even if they do get into combat, like they're still Primaris marines. They're pretty okay in, in combat. I don't know. In my opinion, they should have just released all these minis as a separate box set. Because honestly, all I want are the heavy intercessors. If you guys need filleted ones, um, you're going to have to buy this box set. Like, come on. Um, if you have a buddy who wants the Necron half, go halfsies on this because uh, the price isn't official yet but it's rumored to be like anywhere in like the 120 range to 160 dollars for it because you do get five heavy intercessors a captain chronomancer five uh, blade ones you get a board that you can play on and you do get some necron terrain so it's not like you're just playing or paying for the minis you do get a little bit of terrain which it's cool but like i only want the heavy intercessors so i don't know if i'm going to be getting this box set um i'll probably just be scouring the ebays for the heavy intercessors because at the minimum i need two squads so i would need at least 10 guys so that's two boxes but they're really good they're really tanky they're really durable so i kind of do want to run 10-man squads of these guys I don't know, we'll see. Depending on what the prices are for the Spock set, we'll see how it turns out. However, this leads me to a question for you guys is, do you like what GW's been doing lately? Releasing box sets that pit Space Marines against another um, enemy, usually Xenos. Like, Dershwan obviously plays Orcs, and for the longest time, I know he's had his eye on Gaskul Mag Uruk Tharaka, but the only way to get this bad boy 
is to get the box set that pits the orcs against the space wolves, Ragnar and whatnot. And this box set has been pretty hard to find because everybody's getting it for Gaskell. And when you do find Gaskell on its own, he's almost worth the entire box. So it's like, I'm kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Might as well just find the whole box, get Gaskell, and then sell everything else off. Um, and they're doing the same thing here with this box set. Like, the only way to get these models is to get this whole box. And if you only play Space Marines, then you have no reason to have the Necrons. They did the same thing with, uh... I forgot the name of it. That box set that brought in 9th edition. Like, all the models in there were new. Brand new sculpts, some new actual models. And it was really awesome to have the Necrons come out with, like, the Scorp pack warriors and whatnot and then you had in the indominus box set there you go and then you had like the space marine side that was really really good and unfortunately some of these models you can't get separately yet um obviously they have come out with their own box sets for like a few of them but not for all of them so if you're looking to get your hands on things it's almost required for you to go on ebay or any other site to try and grab your hands on these but I don't know. I mean, obviously GW's got a plan. They got to get rid of inventory and whatnot. And maybe they're just like, well, we made a shit ton of these Necron flayed ones. Eh, just put them in this box set. Oh, but it's not an equal battle if they buy it. Eh, who cares? <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's cool though, because regardless of what this box set has inside, it has what I'm looking for. So definitely I'm going to be keeping an eye out on this. Um, the cool thing about the flayed ones is if they're not good on the tabletop at least they got good lore <laughs> and uh the lore on them is really really badass because the reason why necrons have this virus the flayer virus is because during the war in heaven near the end of it there was a Catan shard that was ordered to not be broken up into smaller well he wasn't a Catan shard yet he was a full-blown Catan. And the Silent King ordered his Necrons to not just divide him into separate shards, but to upright annihilate the guy. So Landu Gore was taken apart systematically and killed. Not like you can, If you have a Catan shard, you'll never find one of this guy because he is 100% dead unless they retcon it. But in his dying like curses, he cursed these necrons with the flare virus and now because of that um these necrons are just insane with trying to wear the skin of their enemies and it's such an interesting concept because this virus doesn't just affect necrons uh there was actually a case where some i think it was Skatari, or maybe just straight up adeptus mechanicus priests they were like trying to work around and try to re re replicate how the bodies of Necrons can like self-repair and all that. So as they were working with the living metal, they actually got caught with the Flare virus and they began to like skin themselves and just outright mutilate their bodies um, to the point where they actually started praising and venerating Landu Gore, the Catan. So it's really, really interesting to see, like, the, the the consequences of killing a Catan. Maybe after this, that's what sparked the Silent King to say, hey, maybe we shouldn't kill off Catan. <laughs> maybe we should just break them apart into smaller, manageable pieces and then capture them in our Pokeballs. So, just imagine, if one Catan did this, imagine if they killed all of them, what the ramifications of that would be. That's actually pretty awesome to think about. Like, you have the burning one, maybe if you kill the burning one, you, I don't know, spontaneous human combustion or something like that <laughs> would become more prevalent. Uh, it, it's cool. It's a nice, uh, interesting theory to think about. Like, the Void Dragon and the Machine Spirit, what would that do? Create more AI, maybe? I don't know. But it's still fun to theorize, and it's really good lore that you would never even think about just by looking at this box set. It's like, oh yeah, flayed ones. Close combat Necrons, that's it. 
But anyway, I've been rambling on long enough. Um, let me know your thoughts on this. Are you going to be picking up this box set for Kill Team? Will you be scouring eBay to piece it um, apart or get certain pieces? And overall, what are your thoughts on the whole concept of GW doing much more like combinations of factions instead of just single boxes for each uh, faction? I'm curious to see your responses, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed anything I had to say today. Stay subscribed for more things Warhammer 40k, because we post videos each and every day. This has been The Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.